Happy Monday Knitters! I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. I just want to start out this week's episode by saying welcome. Since last week's New Start Monday video, we have increased our community here. We have new subscribers, viewers, and commenters and I just wanted to say welcome and thank you so much for all the comments. I know this week I did not have a chance to answer all of them because there was a lot of them and but I did read them all. So I did read them all and I really appreciate it because you guys really helped me out solving one of my problems with one of my projects last week. So it was, it was super fun chatting with you and getting to, you know, getting just different people's opinions and ideas. It's, it's great. I really, really appreciate it. So if you are new here, I am here every Monday casting on two new projects. One is always a dishcloth because I want to knit one a week so I can have 52 at the end of the year for gift giving, which I have been doing by the way. It is now middle of October and I have been doing this since January. I have not missed a week. I think there was once, twice, I think there was twice that I started and got the dishcloth half finished. Didn't finish it that week, but I finished it the following week and did that week's dishcloth so it, it all evened out. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So dishcloth is always one start. The other start is something typically from stash. Sometimes not. The odd time this year I have gone out and have got a new ball of yarn. But pretty much the focus of this year, like a lot of knitters say, want to really work on using up some of the yarn that I've been collecting over the years. So with everything that's happened this year, this was the perfect year to have a well-stocked stash and be able to knit from it. And I've done pretty good. So I will show you, well, let's might as well start off with our dishcloth. That's usually what we start with. Thanks so much. This is the one project that your comments really helped me out a lot with this week. You know, I've been kind of obsessed with the Red Heart Scrubby um, yarn. I want to say cotton, scrubby cotton, but I don't even think it's not even cotton. What is it? just for fun. Can I find? I can never find. Oh, 100% polyester. Yeah, not cotton at all. <laughs> but I guess cotton's not, cotton's pretty soft. Cotton's not real scrubby, is it? So anyways, if you haven't seen this before, this is the ball band, Red Heart Scrubby, and it is scrubby. There are some other kind of scrubby um, yarns out there, but this is I find the scrubby. Is this the scrubbiest that I have found? And I like this. Um, this colorway is ducky. Like I said last week, I was trying to find, because I, I wanted to do a half and half. I wanted to do my super simple diamond dishcloth, start at the bottom, work my way up, and then on the decrease side, I was going to switch to cotton. So scrubby on one end, dishcloth cotton on the other end. But I couldn't really find something that was going to match really well. And I had it in my mind that I really wanted to look and use up some of these odd bits that were in this container that I just have part balls of dishcloth cotton in. And nothing really matched this kind of deep yellow color. Ducky. I guess it does kind of look like a rubber ducky, doesn't it? Um, so this is what I came up with. I thought, well, it's yellow, yellow. We'll put them together. I didn't really love it. And obviously, did neither, neither did you guys because I got some comments saying, Louise, don't try and match. Go totally contrasting. Some people said blue, green, brown. So I stopped. I, I worked the half of it and then I kind of stopped and I paused and I was like, oh, do I just knit this? Because my thinking was, I just wanted to get this knit. I wanted to get it used up out of my stash and be done with it. And I kind of convinced myself that yellow and yellow, even though I I don't like this. I don't even know why I thought I, I should put these together other than I just wanted to get it knit up. But I was thinking, keep it till spring. It kind of looks like daffodils, Easterish kind of time. And I would pull it out and use it then. Anyways, once I read a couple comments saying, Louise, maybe rethink it. I kind of paused and I did think, I'm like, oh, what should I do? And the answer literally was sitting beside me. I was so kind of stuck, focused on getting something out of that part bin container. 
and that I wasn't even looking at literally what was sitting beside me. I think I was sitting there knitting one night on something and uh, I reached over on the coffee table probably to pick up a tape measure or scissors or something and there was a part ball sitting there that I had finished from last week. The Bernat Handicrafter Rick Rack Ombre. And as soon as I saw it, it was like that light bulb moment. I'm like, this is what I need. This is what will go perfect with this ducky colorway. So here it is. I cast on. I knit a, I knit a little wider than I knit last week's blue dishcloth. I think that one, for some reason I thought I only wanted to go to 26 stitches, which has turned out fine. It was just a little smaller than I would normally do. This one, well, I know why. Because... <laughs> Because this yarn is a little, well, I guess it's thick. I, I guess it works up thicker. It still says it's a number four, which is what the dishcloth cotton was, but I was using a bigger needle size. My kind of goal is to go seven and a half inches square. So seven and a half inches wide. And I was thinking because I went up two needle sizes, well, actually more like three needle sizes. Um, I thought, okay, that's going to make it bigger. So I'll just put on smaller stitches, not small, smaller stitch count. 26 was, it was fine, but it was, I don't know. I forget what we made. I think we measured it. It was, it was not, it was, it wasn't close to seven and a half anyways. So I thought, okay, this time I will increase out more. So I went up to 36 or 37 somewhere in that vicinity is where I stopped. And then when I put these two together, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a match made in heaven. I love this. I just think this kind of yellowy green just kind of picks up this ducky color. And I think it, I think this is about as close as I'm going to get to something that complements this. So that's what I did. Now you'll notice when I got up here to the, the width that I wanted it to be, I did a few more rows in the scrubby because I only had a tiny bit of this left and I wasn't sure how far it was actually going to go and I didn't want to run out. My fear was I was going to get, you know, within like three or four rows up here and run out. My backup plan would have been I would just would have attached more of this ducky, the scrubby, and just finished off the corner. But I really wanted it to be half and half and half, give or take a few rows. In the end, I did end up with some of this Rick Rack Ombre leftover but that's fine because I've got another little scrappy dishcloth um downstairs that I have been anytime I come across like teeny tiny little bits I'll put you know two or three or four rows into a dishcloth use up that itty bitty little bit and so that's what this little bit will go into and then that ball band will go into my finished ball band box anyways I really really like this so I'm glad that your comments made me stop and just rethink this. And I ended up getting something that I really like. Instead of just having something that would have been finished and I could have called it done and not really liked, this I absolutely love. Enough that I would com I would combine these two colorways again and I would make more like this. So thank you. That was a really big help for me. I like it. So now the question is, do I keep this for me or do I put it in the Christmas box? And the correct answer to that is it should go in the Christmas box because I may end up with 52 dishcloths, but if I, at this rate, I'm liking everything that I'm knitting and if I keep it all, I'm not going to have enough for gifts. So, you know, this isn't going to be everybody's favorite color. I mean, these are totally, absolutely my colors. Not everybody's going to like yellows. As we know, not everybody likes yellow as much as I do. So we'll see if this one's left over. Um... At the end of Christmas, maybe I'll keep it myself. And, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking. I'm like, hmm, this is going to be different this year because we've we've already canceled our Christmas celebrations, our in-person celebrations. Because normally what I do is I put these together, either fold them or I roll them up and, and, and tie a little piece of ribbon around them and then put them in a, in a wicker basket or a Christmas box of some sort and let people just go and pick out what they want. But we're not seeing people in person. I'm going to either have to do a porch delivery or send them in the mail, which means that I get to pick what they get. So I could rig it so I get this one. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. This is going to go in the Christmas boxes, not going to my kitchen. So that was 
last week's dishcloth finished. Um, la the other new start from last week was this scarf. And I think I did about two rows on it. <laughs> I was all gung-ho when I started. So remember this. This, again, was another no-name ball. Um, I wondered if it was Bernat Pop. I'm not sure if it's a Karen Cake. Um, some, a couple people suggested that it could be different balls that it could be. I'm not really sure what it is, but anyways, it's, um, it's one of those and it's soft. So it's going to make an, a really nice scarf. And I was just doing garter stitch. Now I had asked you what we had thought, because interestingly enough, how I said, I want my, my dishcloth to be seven and a half inches. That's pretty much exactly the width of this <laughs> scarf. And Everybody kind of had mixed thoughts about, um, well, maybe not so much mixed. Um, there was a few different comments, but I guess the gist of them basically were wide. Don't do too skinny because then it ends up super, super skinny and long. And then you got to wrap it a million times around. Um, some people said they like a nice wide scarf. So I think the consensus was that seven and a half inches is good. So I'm going to carry on. Um, I just didn't get to it because I was working so hard on getting that finish done that I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes. So this, um, is here, ready to go. Plain garter stitch. Just, a uh, mindless, because that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something, I remember saying now that I wanted something that I, that I literally did not have to look at. And this is it. <laughs> I just need to sit down and knit, knit on it. So we'll see. Maybe they'll get a few more rows done on it this week. I did get another another project finished. This was, I think, a new start from two weeks ago. This hat, the color wool hat. And this is one that I thought I posted a picture of this on Instagram. And I as and I was saying, you know, like, oh, I really wish I had used this earlier because I love it. Look at the stripes. Look at the colors. So, so me. Orange, yellow, and green. It's got some stripes in there. It's lovely. I I know in last week's video, we were, I was kind of joking about the fact that this is, you know, it was knit at a really, really tight gauge because I, I don't know. I didn't really think it through. I just grabbed the needles that I had knit the hat on from the week before. And this yarn obviously is thicker. And somebody had Googled it. They had done their research for me and left the, left all of the info on this yarn. So I do know that it is Patton's Color Wool. And it's it's a discontinued yarn. But some people, a couple of people said that they found it. Like there is some on Etsy. But I'm not going to go buy more of it. Because I know I had kind of said that I've, like, and now, especially now that I see it knit up, I'm like, hmm, I really would have liked this in a sweater. But that's okay. I'll just have to be happy with it in a, in a hat. Um, so, and the, the details of this yarn. 82 meters, and it's an 85 gram ball. This took almost all of the ball. I'll show you. my new One of my new starts for this week is hat number two. <laughs> and I don't think I've done that. I don't think I have done, well, I guess, I guess this is a, I, I took a week in between, but I haven't done the same ball of yarn hasn't been a new start. So this is, this will be a first, but I really like this and I really want to get it knit up because I think people will like it. And I'm going to keep a hat. I think I'm going to keep a hat and pyramids for myself. So I did the adjusting. Oh, because so also with this, so 85 grams, 82 meters. I wrote it down here because I knew I'd get the numbers mixed up. And the recommended gate or needle size is a six and a half. And if you remember from last week's video, I used a four and a half for the ribbing. And then I went up to a five and a half, which is why this thing is windproof. So see, even if I stretch it, you can't see my fingers through there like there is. <laughs> so, and you know, and this, and it wasn't that bad to knit. By the time I got up though, doing the decreases up here, 
it was hard and I think I had a dent in my finger from a couple days for her like pushing helping to get my needle out of those stitches because it was tight but the body of the hat was doable not that I'm going to knit all of them this tight though I didn't I didn't enjoy knitting it that tight that well. So I have readjusted for this hat. I had kind of already assumed I would go up to a six or a six and a half for the body of this hat. And then now knowing that that's the recommended needle size, I know now I'll be in the ballpark. Because I typically am a loose knitter though, I generally go down a needle size anyways. So I may go a six I may go a six and a half and honestly it's probably going to be fun. it's going to be determined what needle is not already attached to another project <laughs> what size I'm going to go with so anyway look at this is all I had left out of that 85 gram ball which is not enough or I mean not a lot and I'm thinking probably not even enough to have made a pom-pom for this hat because pom-poms take a fair amount of yarn so anyway, so this is new start number one for this week. And I'm using, so my five and a half millimeter needle that I knit the body of this hat, I'm using it on the ribbing this time. And then I'll go up to like either a six or a six and a half for the body. And so already it's, um, it's feeling better. It's not feeling so tight. I mean, you know, I, I, I knew, right? As soon as, as soon as I cast on, this hat. I knew my needle size was wrong, but I was like, nah. <laughs> That's, I was just like, well, you know, it's, I knew it was knittable and it would still be wearable. So I just continued on because that's the thing with hats. Everybody likes them to fit a little differently. Anyway, some people like them to fit snugger. Some people like them to knit looser. Some people like them really, really, you know, tightly knit. Others like them more drapey. So I don't think you can't, you can't go really too wrong. So I know it'll make a really nice warm hat for somebody. Anyways, this does feel be much better to knit with. So we'll compare. When I get this hat done, we'll compare it to this one. So now, because I knew I was going up a needle size here, I cast on less stitches because this one here actually fits me really, really well. So I still want the same kind of circumference. So with a larger needle, I have, I took a, a few stitches. So we'll see. We'll compare them and see how, which one fits better. Because you never know until you try it. So I pulled out another ball. I figured I had this little bit left over. I might as well use it because if I don't, what am I going to do with it? So I'll start this and then I'll just join on this ball, finish off this hat. And then what I have left over here, just start another hat and work our way through I've got some more balls down here and I'll just work my way through those. Hats probably. I think I want to try and do a pair of mitts for myself out of this too. Anyways, that's that. One finished hat and another new start. Um, What else? My other new start for this week. So dishcloth new start. I have pulled out because we're getting close to Halloween. And I was thinking, you know what? I really think I want to do something Halloween inspired. So I have got this Bernat Handicrafter and I think it's called Hot Orange. Uh, yes, Hot Orange. And so that is pretty bright orange. I think it's more orangey than it's looking on the screen. And I have this cone of black. I've had this in my stash for a while. This came from Listowel from the tent sale at one time because I remember like a number of years ago, black cotton was really, really hard to find. You didn't see it that often. So anytime I found black, I would like snatch it up. And this, I don't, I didn't weigh this and I don't think, no, there's no sticker or anything. So I don't know how much was on here, but I had a friend who loves Halloween and she does a ton of Halloween dishcloths this time of year. And she said she was running low on black. So I wound off oh, a fair size ball and I dropped it off to her, did a little porch drop off to her on the weekend. 
because I thought I don't want her to run out. I want her to be able to knit her Halloween. So it was really nice that I could share some of this with her. So she, what I wound off, I weighed it just so she'd have an idea of how much it was. And it was just under three balls that I had given her. And I still have all of this left. Like there's a lot. Have you guys watched Caroline's, um, one of her daily chat videos was just, I think in the last week, she was talking again about how she had a cone of 310 DMC black and how she's had it for so many years and how she's probably going to have it for the rest of her life and do so many projects with it because it is just going to go on and on and on forever and ever. Well, this isn't quite to that extent, but this does kind of make me think that same thing, that there's a lot of dishcloths in this cone. <laughs> so anyway, it'll do me for quite a few Halloweens probably, because that's really the only time I'm going to use black is at Halloween. I think I'm going to go back through my patterns and back earlier, I don't know, March, April, I'm guessing, I did a tweed knit stitch and it was a two color pattern. I think that's what I'm going to do with this dishcloth. So I've pulled out my needles again. I'm going to go back down to my small needle size. I'm going to do a 3.5 and work this. So I think this will be fun. Just kind of a really seasonal Halloween type project that I can just put in my kitchen for the next few weeks and just kind of, you know, decorate my house for the season. So that I'm really excited to do that. Do something orange and black, I think will be fun. So that is the second new start. What else do I have to show you? Oh, I have my big project to show you. But before I show you that, I'm going to I am going to show you what I found. How, way back, well, way, way back, not way back, probably like a month ago, month, six weeks ago, Karen Cakes. Remember I showed you one and I knit a hat, the Karen Cupcakes. Is that what's called? Chunky Cupcakes. Karen Chunky Cupcakes. So I'm not sure if these are still available. I think they've just been discontinued, but our dollar stores here. I, ha I saw them, remember that whole long story? There's always a story with everything. I had found one at a dollar store. I didn't buy it, I think the first time I saw it because I was really excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, they have Karen here and there. I like the super fun. It's $4 for this plus the, with the pom-pom. Uh, anyways, the next time I saw it, I grabbed it. And it, that colorway was blue, a blue and a red and a gray. And it was called Jam Session. And it had a... a baby blue pom-pom on it so anyways i i knit that hat and i showed that to you a few weeks ago and that was the needle size that i'd used on that hat was what i used on the orange hat which didn't work so but anyways the good news is is now i know what needle size i can use for this i was in the dollar store this past week picking up some things and of course i have to take a little walk down the craft aisle just just to see what was there and they had this one and I thought, hmm, I have to grab it because they're selling out pretty much um, as, soon, as soon as they go on the shelves. Because I know one friend, I had told one friend when I would got the other one, and she went to the same store later in the day and they were already gone. So I think people are grabbing them up pretty quick when they, when they appear on the shelves. And not all the Dollaramas have them, it's just kind of hit and miss. So when I found this one, I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to leave it, right? And this one is called Grapesicle. So look at that. So there's kind of a darker purple. And what is this? It's kind of a, a gray. I know it looks green, but I think it's more gray. And then the white. And then, oh, look at that. There's some fun shades of kind of pinky, pinky purples. So if it's good enough to buy one and you know that they're going to be hard to get, that's when you buy two. So I have got two. These are going to be hats and these are going to go into the Christmas box. I think I already know who these are going to go to. So these, so this was fun. I don't know. It's just finding something that, you know, there's, I don't know. It's kind of, it was just the luck of the draw. I found them and I grabbed them because I'm going to cast those on. So those will be new starts. Well, coming up pretty quick if they're going to be for Christmas. Okay, 
You want to see what else I was working on? What? Oh, this is this is the time. I feel like we need like a big, um, you know, a drum roll or something. Unless you saw my picture on Instagram this morning, and then you already know what this is. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so excited. I've even already worn this today. My sweater is finished. It's finished. The ends are woven. Except I do see one that's kind of poking out right now, but that's all right. We can, that's easily fixed. So look at this. Done. Done, done, done. And I wore it. So today, it's Thanksgiving Monday here for us. And I had, I had said, did I say last week? Or... Maybe it was Friday night on the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit on Live Knit Night. I had said that I had was wanting to try to get the sweater done this weekend so I could wear it. I wanted to do some hiking this weekend because the weather was supposed to be really nice. And so I thought this would be perfect. Like I thought it was supposed to be cool, but you know, nice for fall. And I would wear the sweater. Well, <laughs> I don't want to complain, but it ended up being really quite nice yesterday and today the whole weekend was really quite nice not really a heavy sweater wearing kind of day but um oh what do I have oh it's just that and uh but anyways my sweater is done I did wear it today a little bit because it was kind of one of those days where it was it was warm but it got windy and then it kind of got cool. And then by the time I was finished walking, it was, um, it, the sun was going down. So it was starting to get a little, a little cooler, but that was really kind of stretching it because, you know, <laughs> I didn't really, it was more I wanted to wear it, not that I had to wear it. So anyways, here it is. It's finished. So I've taken some pictures. So I will, I will. Um, I will add them at the end because I, I probably, I'm not sure if I can add them here in the middle, but I will add them at the end. I, I took some pictures. It's nothing like, I've kind of given up worrying about what my neighbors think of me now. <laughs> I am, I am sure they sit in their yard and they're like, oh no, here she is again. She has a piece of finished knitwear, her camera and her tripod. <laughs> and set up and like try to get a picture so because it's hard when you do a selfie you can only get like you know basically this much you can't see the whole sweater so you know I don't know nothing like doing a photo shoot of yourself I don't know it just seems but I guess my neighbors are getting used to that by now or not I'm not sure but anyways I have a finished sweater I love it 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 fits nice I have to say I was a little worried that the sleeves were going to be too tight and I did pull out Friday night <laughs> when I started working on sleeve number one. Oh, did it try? It took me three tries to get the gauge right on the arms. So I did a chunk, pulled it out and what did I do the first time? I had wrote it, I did my math for my, for the decreasing on the arms, figuring out how long I was going to need the sleeve, the, my, the circumference plus my ease, how big I wanted it down here for the calf, did, did my math to figure out how often I would need to do decreases to get down to the length and the width that I wanted. And then I thought, hmm, you know, how soon do I want to start my decreasing? So I kind of played with the numbers and I did started it and I looked at it and I, hmm, I don't know if this looks right. Tried it on, felt a little snug, pulled it out, readjusted how soon I started doing my decreases and started again and still thought, nope. This is not looking exactly how I want it. So I pulled it out again. And I mean, and I had done, I don't, I don't know, this much. And with this super chunky yarn, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of knitting. I don't know, maybe a couple hours. I mean, it was enough, but not the end of the world. 
So I pulled it out again. I changed needle sizes and I stayed with the same decrease the second rate, the second revamp on my decreases and I, and I carried on. So I did it and I loved it. I do love it. It is really nice and warm. It is comfy. I like how the sleeves fit. Oh yeah, it's great. I like the length of it. I made this one a little longer than this one. This was my first Karen cake. So this is the Karen cake anniversary ball. Let me show you. I've got, oh, that's a whole other topic we can chat about. <laughs> so the yarn, I really liked this yarn. I really liked it. And I know I mentioned this in one of the other videos. I did not find this colorway as splitty as I did this one. I don't know why. S same yarn. I don't know why. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. Anyways, that so that was just a, a happy little surprise. And I thought I would show you what I had left over. First off, water bottle. A lot of people gave me great suggestions on how to keep that ball of yarn. Because, because I couldn't find the tail on the outside of the ball when I started, because I was going to knit from the outside and work my way in, could not find that tail for the life of me. So I pulled, started from the center. And because you know that Karen cake was like, it's huge. It was like this big. So as the center gets knit up, it starts to fall in on itself. This first ball for the gray sweater that I did, it did by the end, it was kind of like those big lump of yarn <laughs> and, and I was really worried it was going to get tangled. So for this ball, that's what, you know, I had said again that I was worried about it getting so tangled. And so I got lots of suggestions on putting something inside a flower vase, um, just different things, just any, just a lot of different things. So, and at first my thought was, I thought, well, because this ball is so big, and like the center was, I thought it was like wide, there was a larger hole there than there really was. So of course I just had a water bottle one day with me and I plunked that down in the center and that was enough that it did help. It kept it open and it kept it standing up and it seemed to work okay for a little while. But then I don't know if it was just because I had used that more yarn around it. And so it was still kind of falling in on itself if it kind of got tangled more so around the bottle, like it would kind of, like, kind of pull up over top of the bottle or kind of get pulled like, caught underneath it. And so then I'd find myself trying to like pull the yarn, take the bottle out, kind of sort the yarn out, put the bottle back in. And then at one point it did kind of get tangled. So I'd be able to <laughs> pull out and knit a little bit. And then there was like this loop that kept twisting around my working yarn. So I'd have to unwind that, pull out some more. It would twist again, untwist it. <laughs> so in the end, when, once I got to this, this, this odd little bit of yarn that kept twisting around my working yarn, once I got to that and I had knit that up, I got rid of the water bottle. And then I just, I just let it sit in this basket, my actual skein of yarn, that big ball. I just let it sit in here and I just really carefully just pulled. I didn't fiddle with the ball at all. I just pulled out and knit. And so that actually seemed to be better just to leave it alone than to try to prevent it from getting tangled. Cause the more I, it seemed like the more I tried to prevent it from getting tangled, the more tangled it got because, and with this, my first sweater, it never did tangle. I was just worried that it might. So I don't know. That was just my experience. Maybe the water bottle seemed to work well to start with. And then once I had knit a bunch more, maybe if I had replaced this with like an actual flower vase, something that was bigger, or, you know, instead of this slide, if it was wider, that would have kept it held out maybe more. I'm not sure. So I'm not really going to say one way or the other. I mean, maybe if I'd had something bigger, it might've held it and it might've worked okay. But in the end, it was fine without anything in it at all. 
So, I don't really know what that conclusion is, but I know it was fine. So it ended up, it was all good. But I thought you might like to see what I had left over. Oh, and here's the ball band. Just, you can go back and look through some of the older videos. If you haven't seen the Karen Cake Anniversary Ball or on my Instagram at Wildflower Wool, I posted a picture. This is the ball band, you guys. <laughs> look how big around this is. It is a thousand grams. It's huge. So Karen Cakes, I'm assuming that this is just kind of a one-time run of yarn. It was their five-year anniversary of the Karen Cakes line of yarn. And so they, they did these huge anniversary balls. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll get more in. I'm not sure. But I know my Michaels is pretty much sold out of them. They And they have been sold out for a few weeks of some of the blues and purples and pinks, you know, the more popular colors. There is a couple balls of this left and the peach one that obviously wasn't as popular. But anyways, that gives you an idea of how big this ball was. And I still, and I have lots of yarn left. I just um, got my needles still in here my attempt to try to keep everything organized so I wouldn't misplace needles from, you know, like one sleeve to the other. So what I ended up doing, because I had to, oh, here, I'll just show you, give you an idea. There. That's what I have left. So I had to wind off balls because I wanted to keep my width of my stripes the same, which ended up being 10 rows of knitting. So when I was working on the sleeve where it was a lot skinnier than the width of the body, right, you, I would, I would knit 10 rows and I would still have a lot of this color left. I would have to cut the yarn, roll this color into a ball, put it in here, and then, um, Wind, yeah, wind off the rest of this color, cut it, and then pick up the yellow tail from the ball. Knit these 10 rows. I'd still have mo half of it left on the ball. Have to cut it, wind from the ball, you know, to get down to this darker brown. And then add that on. So then when I came to do the second sleeve, I would find my part ball, the other half of the color that was left over from this section of the sleeve, and then I would join it and knit from here onto this sleeve. And then sometimes I didn't finish all of those, so I've got a little teeny bit left. So that's why I have all these balls. And then at the end, this is what I had left. This was that big floppy ball and I just wound it all together in a ball. I didn't want to just leave it sit there because I thought if Daisy ever sat in here, um, who is my cat by the way, um, it would just be tangled beyond anything that I probably would want to sit and work at untangling. So all of these little bits are actually left over from the actual knitting balls that I had wound off and knit from. So I am thinking a scarf, a cowl, a hat. Um, I don't know. I probably have enough here to do a hat and a cowl possibly. And I thought I could, I could get really wild and crazy because I have leftovers from these colors, from this sweater. So I probably, will have not quite as much. I will have a little less because this was a pullover and this is just an open front. So I've got about this much panel <laughs> down the front, less yarn I used for this, more yarn for this. So I'll have less of this leftover. 
You know what I mean, right? So I'm going to have these yellows and shades of brown and these shades of gray. Would you, here's my question for the week, would you mix these together? Do, which way do I want to go here? So like a brown and a gray, the brown and the white. I don't know. Or should I just stick? Because obviously these colors were dyed and matched, you know, to be color coordinating. Should I just stick? Ooh, except that looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Hmm. Maybe I should color kind of. See, I don't know if I would do those. See, there's two shades there. I don't think I would do that, but that maybe. Or this with the two darks, that looks okay, doesn't it? Hmm. So I could mix and match. Or I could save all of these because I have one more Karen anniversary ball left. Must be downstairs. I don't see it up here. And it's the peach parte. So it is kind of oh peach peach and pink, not really pink, but maybe more like a raspberry color. Now that might be fun when I have, but except I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to have left because I don't think I'm going to do a sweater with it unless I do. Well, until like two seconds ago, I was thinking I was going to use it to make a blanket because both of these sweaters, I've had to do all that mix and matching and cutting and weaving in a ton of ends to get all of the stripes to match. It hasn't just been a sit and knit, you know, and I don't know if I want to do that again. <laughs> I could, I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't, but I'm wondering maybe I should just knit that other Karen cake into a lap afghan and just use all it, try to figure out my gauge and how many stitches I'm getting. Um, you know, okay, let me think. Okay, do a really big gauge swatch and try to figure out or actually cast on the number of stitches I want for the blanket, knit a little bit and weigh it. And so then I'll know it's taking so many grams to do so many inches. So then if I carry on that, I can be able to see how many grams I have, how long I can make the blanket and try to use all of it up into a blanket. So then that means I won't have any of those colors to play around with. But maybe I shouldn't play around with them anyways. Maybe I should just keep the colorways separate. And do a hat and a cowl, possibly. Hmm. All right. Do you guys want to weigh in? This is my thought-provoking question now. What do I do with this leftover yarn? That is it. That has been my knitting for this past week. And you know what? Now that this sweater is finished, I just feel like a weight. It's not, not that this was work because I loved knitting it because I was, ex I was excited to do the design process, do my gauge to garment process, figure out. So not knitting from a pattern, knitting from my measurements. And this one here, I kind of went from one of my other cardigans that I wear quite a bit and just measured that, did my gauge. And then it was only... And the, the other cardigan was just kind of a rough roadmap. Is that what we want to call it? A roadmap? Because I ended up adjusting the length on this, and which I'm really happy I did because I really like the length of this. Um, yeah. So, anyways, so many questions and so many, so I don't know. I get, I, I start thinking about too many things. So this wasn't, you know, I, I loved knitting it. I loved designing it. It was really, really a lot of fun, but, um, I made you, I made you a blanket with the other one. Now, one of my goals for this year was to always have a sweater on the needles. So, because I thought, I thought, Hmm, since this sweater's done, maybe I should cast on another one. But as my friend Amber will tell me, I have a summer sweater still on the needles. So I'm still, I still have a sweater on the needles. So I may just work on that this week and I just, yeah, so now that this sweater's done, I just feel like I have no big project cast on right now, other than a few scarves. Anyways, I don't know. It just, I just have this feeling of like, oh, 
I have all this now I feel like I have all this free knitting time now that I'm thinking maybe it's maybe it's just like a mindset thing when you think you know you're working on a sweater just the fact that it's a sweater sounds like a big project a big task to knit whereas if you say oh it's just a hat it's a scarf you know two ball one or two balls you know it doesn't seem so big maybe that's it anyways we'll see what I get done this week I feel like I want to get my dishcloth and just stick with a hat smaller projects that I can start and I can get finished and maybe get some work done on this garter stitch scarf or go out downstairs and pull out some of those project bags and see what I actually already have passed on and maybe do a little bit of work on some of those projects that have been sitting cast on for a while down in the closet. So we'll see. I guess I'll just go whatever inspires me to pick up that project bag. That's that's what I'll work on. I have a European road trip shawl downstairs too. Because that is kind of getting the time of year that I could be using that. So maybe that's when I should be pulling it. I guess we'll find out next Monday what I work on. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching. Please leave me some comments down below because I really do love chatting with you and I love hearing all of your, your ideas. I have a, I know one thing I forgot to tell you when we were talking about, talking about good ideas, what the scrubby dishcloth cotton, somebody had mentioned that then their experience, the scrubby dishcloth cotton does not get um, that sour smell. That's the word she used. I think that's a good way. Now, honestly, I don't really find my dishcloths get a funny smell. And I don't know, because I know this, is, this has been a conversation for years. And what I kind of wonder is if it's the water. Now, I don't know. You guys may think I'm totally crazy, but I've... I've moved around a fair bit and there might have been, there was one house I lived in and we had a well, it was in the country and we had problems with laundry smell and it wasn't just dishcloths and I swear it was the water. It was the well water that there was a mineral, there was something in it. So anyways, I don't know, but um, typically I don't have a problem with my dishcloths getting that funny smell, but I know some people say that that is a huge problem for them and that's why they don't like cotton dishcloths because of that smell. And this commenter said that the scrubby does not get that smell. So that is a super fun tip. So I would like to know if anybody else has found that in their experience. So anyways, I thought that was pretty fun too. And, um, yeah, I think that's all. Oh, and a couple people had said, and I'm sorry, I should apologize for this. I don't know what happened. A couple people left comments right as soon as last week's video went up saying, saying, hey, I don't know if you know, but there is a ton of ads in your video. And I do apologize for that because I had set it up that there would be no ads in the middle of the video. And somehow there was. So I'm really glad that I had checked the comments right soon after the video went up and I went in and changed the settings. So hopefully um, that fixed that problem. And I'll try to make, I'll double check on this video as well because I know it's annoying to have. And some people say like it wasn't even just like once in the middle. There was, it was like every couple of minutes or something, there was ads popping up and that's really annoying and that's not what I want. So Anyways, thanks so much. This video is getting super, super long. So I'm going to go. I'm going to have a great week knitting on who knows what, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever way the wind blows me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I pick up and knit. So I hope everybody has a fantastic knitting week. You can follow along on Instagram with me and, you know, get an update on what I'm working on and we can meet back here again next week and chat some more about knitting. I'll show you, hopefully I'll have this second hat finished and figure out what yarn I'm going to start next week. So thank you so much everybody for watching and commenting and I will chat with you in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.